Welcome to the first section of bug bounty hunting course in which we are going to study about OWASP. So OWASP is very important for understanding the fundamentals of cybersecurity and ethical hacking. So here we are going to start with OWASP and we will understand the importance of it. We will see what is OWASP, why do we use it and we will also learn how can we categorize vulnerabilities based on it. Also, we will see the severity of each vulnerability and also we will learn how to fix them. OWASP is very important for every one of us who are into security testing. A cybersecurity consultant, a freelancer, a bug bounty hunter or a rec team member also needs to know what OWASP is and it's important. So let's start. So what is OWASP? In this further slides, we are going to see what is OWASP, why OWASP is important, why do we follow OWASP, OWASP 2013, OWASP 2017, and what are the key differences between both. So OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. The top 10 sections of the vulnerabilities into OWASP signifies what are the top 10 vulnerabilities that we find into any web application. OWASP is also considered as a Bible for security professionals. It gives a rich and refined categorization of vulnerabilities of each type. And we are going to hunt all of the types of vulnerabilities that we see in OWASP. It also shows the vulnerabilities in web applications for different types of content management systems. So first, we are going to get introduced with OWASP 2013. So let's quickly see what are the 2013 vulnerabilities in OWASP. Starting from the first one, it is injection. Second is broken authentication and session management. Third is cross-site scripting, also known as XSS. Fourth is insecure direct object reference, also known as IDOR. Fifth is security misconfiguration, also known as security misconfig. Sixth is sensitive data exposure, also called as SDE. Seventh is missing functional level access control, MFLAC. Eighth is CSRF, cross site request forgery. Ninth is using component with known vulnerabilities and the last one is unvalidated redirects and forward. Okay, so this was the OWASP 2013. Now let's see what is OWASP 2017 and what has been changed between both. Then we are going to see each category and we are going to understand each category in depth. As you can see on your screen on the right side, OWASP Top 10 2017 has some significant changes. So what are the significant changes? So the first vulnerability that is the injection remains the same. Then broken authentication and session management in 2013 has been changed to only BA that is broken authentication as you can see on your screen. Third is XSS. It is still here into 2017. IDOR is removed from 2017. It was there in 2013, but has been removed in 2017. So IDOR and missing functional level access control are being merged together into BAC, which is called as broken access control. Next one is security misconfiguration. Next is sensitive data exposure. CSRF has been removed from 2017 instead of which insufficient logging and monitoring has been added. Using, and comp using component with known vulnerabilities is still present in 2017. Unvalidated redirects and forward has been removed from 2017 and has been and the new ones which are added are XXE and insecure deserialization. So let's do a quick recap of 2017. The what are the vulnerabilities? The vulnerabilities are as follows. Injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, XXE, back, broken access control, security misconfiguration, XSS, insecure deserialization, 
using components with known vulnerabilities and insufficient logging and monitoring. So what are the key differences between 2013 and 2017? Okay, so there are basically four key differences. What are those? First one is XXE, second is insecure deserialization, third is BAC, which is the combination of IDOR and missing functional level access control, and the last one is insufficient logging and monitoring. Yes, so let's start with the first one. What is injection? As we saw into the OWASP, this is on the A1 category, the first category. So injection basically means to inject something, okay? Like whenever we are sick, the doctor injects the medicine into our body. In similar manner, we are going to inject something into a web application software. An attacker sends a query, which is basically injected into any server. And if the server interprets it, whatever the attacker has in injected, then we get successful injection into that application. Any interpreter which combines data into command is also vulnerable to injection attacks. This means any interpreter which is at any server takes the input from any attacker, let's say the input is in the form of a query or a command. If the interpreter interprets it and executes it, then it is vulnerable to injection attacks. So what are the types of injection attacks? Injection attacks are of SQL injection type, LDAP injection, OS injection, command execution, Ruby injection, shell shock, which is basically the bash vulnerability, etc. Yes, so let's move further. The most important thing, why injection happens? Injections happen because of the untrusted data that has been directly interpreted by any interpreter of any web application. So where can you send the untrusted data? Basically, if you want to do injection attack into any website, you can send the untrusted data into a HTTP request in the form of a URL parameter, form field, headers or cookies. So basically everywhere you can send the untrusted data. It can be in the form of command or query. Yes. So injection can happen everywhere into a web application software. What can be achieved by injection is the second question. So if an attacker is able to inject his query or command, he can perform a lot of desirable actions onto the server. For example, a SQL injection authentication bypass query as can be seen is 101 or 1 equals to 1 which makes the condition of true and this can perform a login bypass on many of the applications. Second, as we can see cat etc pass wd. This is the command to read the user's file into Linux system. Next, you can see there is a one liner bash for a reverse connection. And the last one is again a one liner netcat for reverse connection. So basically, you can get a complete system shell by injection. Okay. Cool. So now we will see how do we fix this types of injection issue issues. So by validation, input validation is very important. Second is escaping, which is also called as output encoding. Escaping is the primary means to make sure that any untrusted data which an attacker is sending to any interpreter does not convey an injection attack. Okay. So there is no harm in escaping data properly. It will still render in the browser properly. Escaping, what does escaping means? It basically simply means that it should tell the interpreter that the data is not intended to be executed. Okay. It, it, it can be reflected, but not executed. Therefore, it will prevent attacks from working. The last thing, which is the parameterized queries, which can be used, which will help in fixing injection issues. Thank you.